You're welcome back to the Culture Podcast. As always, my name is Farida. Today, we are going to have a very important conversation, one that is dear to my heart. I always want to talk about it. If you know me, you know that I like talking about mental health. And today, we are going to talk about mental health. And we have the ever gorgeous, beautiful, oh my God, her voice is charming. <laughs> Natalia Ando. Hi, Farida. You're welcome. Thank to the you. Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to have you here. Good I'm to be here. It's good to be I here. I love your voice. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Your voice sounds really good as well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let me just give you a bit of what she does. She's a radio and TV personality. She's a certified counseling psychologist. She's a voiceover artist. She's also a PR consultant. And she's an event host. Like you have, you have it all. Like, <laughs> all small, how small. how do you do it? Oh, as in you know being able to do yeah, all these everything. things. Um, I mean, so I don't do all of them at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the weekdays I'm on radio, and sometimes I have some consultancy in terms of the counseling psychology. Yeah. But because I schedule it, I know that maybe, for instance, after radio today, I'm seeing maybe two clients or two patients. Um, and then maybe on the weekend, I have an event here and there. Right. So it doesn't all come together. With proper planning, you're able to do all of them nicely. Able to do all of them. Yeah. I mean, we are going to talk about mental health. Mm. If I may ask, have you ever had challenges with your mental health and no, we or you would like to. No, I mean, you, 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 the question was not complete, so I was waiting for you to complete okay. the question. And how, what, what made you your, what made you have the interest in psychology counseling? Right. I mean, um, in one way or another, everybody has had mental health challenges, really, because my my problem is that when we say mental health, people are looking at the big things. People right. are thinking, you know. Um, the big diagnosis like a psychosis or or, or a mania and all of that. Right. But even all the little stresses in life are connected to your mental health, okay? And every now and again, we all go through these um, phases in life that affect us one way or another. What made me take interest is I realized that the conversation about mental health was not taken very seriously in our part of the world. Um, even now, as I started, I have seen the struggle. Anytime I have to have the conversation, you know, not everybody is open to having the conversation right. and also understand it, you know, and it's difficult. So I thought, I mean, definitely something I want to champion, something I want to move forward in a direction that will help the conversation. So yes, that is part of the reason why I decided that yes, I would definitely study more, know more, you know, educate more and help down the stigma around mental health. Now I have kind of a challenge or a problem when it comes to like talking about mental health. I'm very open. I like talking about it, but the more I talk about it, the more I feel like people don't really understand what it means to like deal with mental mm. health issues. Because you see someone saying, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. And the person doesn't really understand what depression yes. means. Mm. Maybe the person just have, have, has a bad day and yeah. the person feels like, I'm depressed. How do you deal with people, like when you come across people like that? Do yeah. you People who just yeah. throw the words about without knowing right. the details of what they are saying. I mean, I get that a lot. Even on social media, sometimes you come across people people whose posts suggest things like that. Um, and before you're able to confidently say that you're going through depression, you're going to have to be diagnosed by a doctor or a professional um, because it, it's, a, it's a series of things that will get you there. It's not a one-day situation like right. you rightly said. You go through a bad day and then you say, oh, I'm depressed. No, that's not how it works. Um, you have to go through a series of events in order to be diagnosed as being depressed. I know people throw that word about, or sometimes for some people, depression is synonymous to um, feeling bad or feeling low. You know, there are days you wake up that, there are days I wake up, I don't even want to go to work. 
Mm-hmm. You know, some days I succeed because I'll call my boss and say, mm, I'm not feeling well now, mm-hmm. go. But some days you still have to push yourself to go. Um, but you definitely need to have a diagnosis before you say that you are depressed. You know, it doesn't help when you just throw the words like about that. without knowing exactly what it entails because it's a big thing and it entails a lot, mm-hmm. a whole lot. So let me let me just tell you a story. So um, in 2021, mm-hmm. my dad passed, and so sorry, like, you know, thank you. And like for a month or two, I wasn't really myself, and I didn't like you know understand what was going on. So I I definitely knew that I wasn't depressed, but I wasn't okay. So I started reading about PTSD, PTSD. Then I found out that like I know that. So, like, three months in two years, I knew that I had PTSD, but the struggle was how I was going to tell the people around me that this is what I'm going to, like, this is why I've been behaving in a certain way. And I know you guys can see it, <clears throat> but you don't really know that right. this is what I'm going to, so, and how I'm going to see, <clears throat> I'm sorry. and okay. how I'm going to see a doctor and everything. Funny enough... <laughs> When we finally decided to tell, like, my mother, it wasn't, she, it didn't go down well with her. Like, not that she didn't understand, but she just didn't want to accept that right. this is what I was going through. So mm. we weren't able to, but my sister and I decided to, like, see a doctor behind mm. without telling her. How do we get to, you know, make these people, like, the our older generation right. understand that, you know, now... Gen Z's are claiming to understand the mental health issues very well. Right. But how do we bring in the older generation to understand that this this is the problem we have to face right. and how we'll be able to cope with it? Right. I think it's more education, more conversations to let them know. Um, because I think, you know, back in the day for them, mental health was stuck raving, clothes off, roaming the streets type situation but it goes way further than that so it will take a lot more education for them to be aware of um the different types and um the different symptoms that come with the different things that people could go through mentally listen because you mentioned ptsd let me say this sometimes even things like a heartbreak yeah, a heartbreak from, I don't know, somebody you loved so dearly can um, get you to break down mentally in a way that if it's not handled properly, you may not be able to come back to what you used to be. Right. Yeah? And it won't even just be for the moment. It can be forever. Okay? So anything that you go through, anything, whether it's loss, whether it's heartbreak, Mm -hmm. whether it's pain, whether it's any situation, you need to always find a way to handle it so that you you always get back to yourself, okay? Otherwise, then you keep losing yourself bits by bits. And all of those things, they disturb your mental state. So it's always important to have more conversations, Mm -hmm. you know, with our parents, with the older generation. Let them know that, okay, so this is this. And usually when this happens, this is this. And everybody copes differently when it comes to things that are challenges that we face uh, mentally. People cope differently. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people lose, you lose a family member. Like you lost your dad in 2021. I lost mine in 2020. I know. And it was equally tough, Um, you know. And would you believe that up until now, I haven't actually cried 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 for him right i haven't i haven't been able to bring myself to do that i mean i have grieved in a lot of different ways but i haven't cried 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 Mm -hmm. i mean i mean i had a few tears during the funeral it's just two seconds but it wasn't i feel like there's a lot of it inside me i just haven't had the opportunity to bring it out True. But grief is a process. It's not all of it shouldn't happen today yeah. or tomorrow. It's a process. 
So you need to allow yourself to go through the process, you know, and also because you can't really schedule your feelings. Like typically people would expect that, oh, because my dad died when he was being buried, I would cry and throw myself on the phone <laughs> and do all that. Yes, of course, but I'm, I'm heartbroken, but my grief will show up when it wants to show up. I can't schedule it or True. force it or control it Yeah. because grief is a process. It happens to different people differently yeah you know so these are things that you know the older generation need to understand so that they can have the patience to help the younger generation go through the things they are going through also because this generation is having it a lot tougher um i mean with the onset of social media and the good the bad the ugly that come with social media it's a lot of pressure on a young person today which equally comes with a lot of um, mental challenges, you know. Social media brings so much mm-hmm. that that disturbs the mental state of a young person today. Mm-hmm. Something that the older generation were not privy to, right. so they can't really relate. So it takes a lot of education for them to see and understand. Speaking of social media and how we are able to cope with These external factors, like Mm. social media, external family, like how, let's speak about how they are able to, you know, influence your mental health state Mm. in regards to grief. Mm. You are grieving. People, like people know that you are grieving, Mm. but some people also try to make it worse. Example, you are in a workspace. People don't really know the kind of mental state Mm. you are in, Mm. but People talk anyhow. Yeah. People do things anyhow. How should, how will we be able to, or how can we be able to, you know, cope with all of these external yeah. factors? Yeah. Okay. So two things. First of all, I think that people should be more considerate. Um, y- yesterday, I talked about how people should be kind, kinder, you know, in, in, in their utterances and in their interactions with people because everybody's going through it in recent times there's so much happening people are really going through it but as i sit with you right now i don't know what your problems are it's it's not written on your face i would never know you may put up the most beautiful smile but behind it you may be going through a lot and because i don't know that the best or the least i can do in this situation is just to be nice to you you know to smile at you to just to say kind words mm-hmm. and all, that is the least anybody can do. do, you know. So I feel like if we we can be deliberate about <clears throat> being kinder, okay, to people, that will be the beginning. Because sometimes, I mean, I hear it all the time when somebody loses a parent, a mother or a father, and maybe at work, you have to say, hey, it's a work, mommy. It's why I cool mommy. Right. You know, they say things like that. But because you don't know the kind of headspace the person is in, you're not sure whether you can throw that to them as a joke. Mm-hmm. They may not take it as a joke. I mean, maybe this parent was their everything, you know, and if they have lost that parent, the last thing they want to hear is a statement like that. Right. But people play around with those things. So first of all, we're going to have to learn how to be kinder in our words. And then secondly, on the other side, we need to... Um, Know who we are, okay? Know what's important to us and know what the truth is for us so that when other people say things, it doesn't affect as much, okay? Because sometimes people will say what they'll say, Mm -hmm. but you know you. You know you. You know what's important to you. You know what's truth, what the truth is or what's truthful to you. Mm -hmm. So if you know this and this is your conviction, no matter what anybody says, really, mm. it won't affect you much, you know. But sometimes, because we are a little lost, not knowing ourselves much, anything anybody throws at us becomes a problem because it's like, ah, why would you say this about me? But really, if anything, if anything is said about you and it's not the truth, why would you bother being upset about it? Yeah. Because it's not the truth. Yeah. So just like you said, it's not written on your face. Mm. So how do we deal with... You know, it's difficult to kind of open up to someone. Mm. How do we deal with the stigma that comes with it? That comes with mental, mental health. health challenges. 
Um, I mean, anybody that's going through any kind of mental health situation, obviously, you won't go and put it on a billboard mm-hmm. for the world to see, but you have to deal with it. You need to get help. You need to seek help. There are so many places that you can go to get help. So you need to talk to maybe a clinical psychologist. And there are some people whose conditions require that they take medication. Some people need to be relaxed, calmed down. Some people can get a bit agitated, you know. So some people are put on medication. Some people to go through therapy. But you wouldn't know until you see a professional, okay, so that they help you understand first of all what's going on. Because you see, it's really difficult when you're going through a mental phase. Half the time, you yourself, you don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah. Because you're like, you know, you wake up, you know, but why am I feeling this way? You don't even understand what's going on with you. So you need a professional to help you, first of all, understand what's going on, okay? And also because a mental health diagnosis cannot be, you know, you can't feel something today and go today and get a diagnosis. It has to be something that happens over a period so that we're sure that, okay, this has been happening for a while. What is going on? Okay. So you you see a professional, they can help you understand, first of all, what's going on with you so that you yourself understand it. Mm -hmm. Then after that, they can decide what can help you. Do you need therapy? Do you need um, medication? There There are some people who cannot sleep. You know that people who, when it's nighttime, they cannot sleep. Yeah. They will sit, they'll scroll through the phone, they will do all kinds of things, and they will not sleep. They cannot. Even when they try, they can't. And maybe sleep will start coming to them when it's already 6 in the morning. And, of course, at that time, they also have to go out or do this or do that, you know? So there there are a number of people. I mean, there are some people who are on sleep medication. Because in the night, if he doesn't take that medication, he cannot sleep you know, mm-hmm. and your sleep is directly linked to your mental health, okay? How well you sleep guarantees how well you operate during the day because the sleep is to catch up and, and renew your energy and refresh you and, you know, revitalize you, all of the rest. So by the time you wake up, you're ready and energized again. So if you, if you don't get that sleep, it messes with everything, Okay, and how you operate because mental health, by definition, really is is um, the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you behave. It's a it's a direct link. People have always believed that mental health is just your mind, but your emotions are directly attached. Okay, so your feelings. Okay, how you think, how you feel, and then together they they would um, you know decide how you behave, okay, or, or they will, what's the word I'm looking for, it's not come, mm-hmm. coming to me, but yes, if you think a certain kind of way, and you feel a certain kind of way, and they come together, they inform your behavior, so if you look, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, socially, in your neighborhood, whatever, you know some people who behave really badly, yeah, yeah, they behave really badly because of the way they reason, it's how they reason, and your reasoning really will come from um, maybe your grooming, your beliefs, um, the things that you value, your values, all of those things come together, okay? So everything's different, but all of it comes together, okay? So the way you think, the way you feel, and then together it informs the way you behave, and that is your mental health. All right. Let's talk a little bit about childhood and how Mm. it affects the person when the person is all grown up. You know, there are people who grow up and be like, this this thing affected me, childhood trauma. Mm. That's why I'm behaving the way I behave. Mm. Like most, let me me say, 70% of the time, Mm. a lot of the things that we do now as grown ups is directly linked to how we were brought up. How would you say we should be able we should be able to you know deter it? or if if there's childhood trauma really we should be able to own up and mm. say that this is how I grew up but I'm going to change the narrative. Mm. How do we manage that? Right. So um I think that every human being needs I know a lot of people 
when the year comes to an end and we're going into a new year, people will have lots of resolutions. Mm-hmm. I don't do this again. Blah, blah, blah. But one of the things that I like to, you know, tell people to do is do a lot of introspection. You know yourself as a person. You know where you fall short mm-hmm. and you know where your strengths are okay in growing up as a person not even as in from childhood as, as a person as in me as i sit here today in growing up to be whatever it is i'm looking forward to tomorrow i need to do a lot of introspection and in life growing up means you need to unlearn right and relearn yeah it's always important because And there are so many things that disturbed us as children. And typically in our society, a parent is always right. (laughs) A parent has to be right. Mm -hmm. So no matter how bad the situation was, there's no way you can confront any situation with your parent because they are the parents. What they say goes, no matter how you feel, your feelings don't (laughs) matter. You know, that's typically um, how we were raised. These days, it's changing, and I love that. Um, but when you become a grown-up and you know that you have some scars from way back when, you need to decide that this is not helping me. And these things, they tell in our relationships with people. There are some people who are extremely clingy. Like, you know, you know, you, you, you meet this person, whether it's a relation, a romantic relationship or a friendship, you find that they are stuck to you. Like the kind of person who is here from you every day. Let's do everything together. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da is always a sign of trauma from the past because sometimes they have faced a lot of neglect, you know, from the past or from childhood where everybody just leaves them. So when they find a person that likes them small, they are holding on for dear life. Like, I'm not letting you go. You know, there are people who do that. And then there are also the people who couldn't be bothered, which is equally um, how some people show you know, yes. they, they, whatever it is, the trauma that they faced as children. Because some people will hold on, other people, they couldn't be bothered. Other people, it's as if they don't even have emotions. Right. You know, they are just... There. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even find the word for it. Mm-hmm. They are just who they are, you know, but all of these are signs. So you need to do a lot of introspection, right. okay? So that you find out for yourself, what is it that I would want more? And always ask yourself questions, but why do I feel this way? You know, sometimes if you're feeling a certain particular thing, you should ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? You know, some days I wake up and I'm so upset. I'm so upset and angry, I think. And so I ask myself, like, why, what is really upsetting me? So once I ask myself that question, then I take my time to answer it. So I, I said, okay, it's for this and this reason. And then I'll say, yeah, but this and this shouldn't get you this much upset. So is there anything else? Then I go in and go in and go in. So you, you need to ask yourself questions and find answers to those questions. All right. In, in introspecting, would you advise that, you know, take away everything that makes you feel bothered? For example, a lot of people will say, I'm taking off bad energy. I'm cutting off this person for my life. I'm cutting off this person for my life. What would you advise? Is it like a quick response? <clears throat> it's okay, clear your throat. It's fine, yeah. Is it like a quick response to, like, you know, if you're having any form of struggle, you know, this thing is bothering me, let me just take it away. Is it, like, really effective? I mean, it could be, but I, I, one of the things that I would like to advise usually is learn how to manage things and people. Um, because... The truth is you you cannot be an island, yeah? And also the thing about human beings is that the people who will love you are the same people who will hurt you. It's a package deal. So really, um, if you cut everybody off after they hurt you, in no time you'll be left all by yourself. You really not have anybody. So you manage things and people. You manage. You manage situations. Okay, you see that, and when you are with somebody for a while, you know they are shortfalls. You know they are good and they are bad, right? right? So, I mean, the good thing is that you, you don't expect um, a surprise <clears throat> a surprise from them because they can't surprise you. When you know someone, they cannot surprise you because 
you know that if I know Ima very well, I know that, oh, Ima, if I go to work at 6 a.m., I'll meet him there. I'll meet him there. You know it, right? So he can't surprise you. Even if he does, it won't be a constant. Yeah. Yeah? It will be like a one-off. It will be a constant. So you manage people. So you know the bad sides of a person or you know the things that they are not so good at or you know how terrible they are at certain things. You manage it. But if you're quick to cut, 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 cut everybody off, in no time you'll be left all by yourself. And you won't really have anybody, really. True. Because there's no, there's not even one person in this life who will be everything you want 100%. Mm-hmm. At some point, they'll disappoint you. At some point, they'll hurt you. It's a human thing. It's nature. It's the way it's supposed to be. And as a matter of fact, the more you care about this person, the bigger the pain or the hurt they are going to give you will be. Yeah. So really, you just have to learn how to manage people. How long should it take you, you know, to seek help? How oh, long? as soon as possible. As soon as possible. And we, you can always tell when you feel changes in, whether physically in your body or mentally. You can always tell. Because you know every human being has a pattern. You know the time you see them, the time you wake up. Yeah. After a while, it becomes a pattern. You can't change it. Um, you know how you feel in your body, okay? You know how you always feel in your body. When something changes, you would know. Yeah. Because when you wake up and you you feel different, you, you can tell. Yeah. You can tell that, no, today my head hurts. Or today, no, when I bend here, it feels this way. You can always tell when there's a change. Same thing. Mentally, you can always tell. Are you, are, are you more tired than usual? I'm more tired. I'm not interested in going out anymore. I'm not even interested in conversations with anybody anymore. I just want to be my, by myself. I, I'm always feeling isolated. This and that, this and that, this and that. Once you notice the changes, you should immediately seek help. All right. Immediately seek help. Yes. How about, you know, children? Mm-hmm. We're talking about education, mental mm-hmm. health education. Should we start from childhood, you know? I mean, the basics, absolutely. The basics, absolutely. They should know what mental health is. They should know what to expect. Listen, a lot of children suffer from ADHD, okay? Um, ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. You know that those children who cannot sit still, Mm -hmm. they are hyper, hyper, absolutely hyper. You can't keep them still for a second. But those ones also have to be diagnosed because it's not like a one-time mm-hmm. thing. Also because children go through phases. When they hit the terrible twos, oh, every child is hyper when they hit the terrible twos. Mm-hmm. So you really cannot diagnose based on... It has to be for a certain period of time before you hit your diagnosis. But mm-hmm. ADHD is a mental health disorder. Okay, it's, it's something in the brain that gets them to always have that hyperactivity it happens with adults it happens with children as well okay so yes by all means children should know the basics the fundamentals what mental health is how they would know if they have good mental health all these things you know have to be taught to the children fundamentals all the little little information they should know we are doing well quite well with mental health awareness, but mm. what else do you think? Because it still feels like, you know, we've We're not, not doing to... much. Yeah. Yes, it's a big conversation, God. It is a very big conversation. It's not one of the conversations that we can have and immediately get response and get everything in line and in check. No, it will take a while. But obviously it takes you and me and everybody to hold hands and do the education and help people understand more why it's important. Because people who go through it have the time, don't know they are going through it. I mean, and for me, that's the most important thing. Because if, first of all, I don't know there's something wrong with me. Then I can't seek help. Then I can't seek help. Then my lack of knowledge will equally affect everybody around me, which is a big problem. Mm-hmm. Because the, I think the most important thing, first of all, it's for me to acknowledge that I have a problem. Then based on that, I can seek help. And then I can, it will help in my interactions with everybody I connect with. And it will just make my life a whole lot better. See, when 
your your mental health is in a good place or when you're mentally healthy your it balances your life out very beautifully mm -hmm. very very beautifully um so nothing takes you by surprise you don't have a lot of anxiety there are so many people who have a lot of anxiety they're always worried about everything worried about everything always always and anxiety is so bad because it it worries your blood pressure so every time if you're not careful then your pressure is this rise and fall rise and fall you know unstable because you're always worrying about everything and it's so bad for your health you know so once your mental health is stable in a good place it balances out your life entirely. It is the reason why people need to, like, it is important mm -hmm. that you take your mental health very seriously. Now, I know there are lots of people who think that presenters, like people on the screens, mm -hmm. actresses, mm -hmm. like popular people, don't mm -hmm. go through mental health, even though mm -hmm. many personalities have come out to say, you know, we are human mm -hmm. beings, we go through this. I just want you to clear that narrative that, you know, mm -hmm. does it, you guys really go through a lot? Or In don't? fact, creatives suffer more mental health issues than any anybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, you know, you are a um, PR, sorry, you are a psychologist, mm -hmm. right? So counseling psychologist. Counseling yeah. psychologist. Do you also go through that? Of course. That's what that's what I said in the beginning. Look, mental health is not stuck raving right. mad. Okay? Like people think it is. It's all the little things. There are some days, like I told you, there are some days I wake up and I think I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to, I don't want to hear anybody's voice. Like, please leave me alone. Let me yeah. try and keep it together. Mm -hmm. Yes, we go through those spaces. That's with those faces. There are days that I wake up and I feel like smashing everything around me. Yeah. You know, all of these stresses, they happen to the best of us. Yeah. But creatives, yeah, actually go through more mental health phases and difficulties than the ordinary person. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to clear that because a lot of people, when you speak to a lot of people, like my mm -hmm. peers, they're always like, you know, these people are too perfect, these people are too... No, you know, they, they see the them as role models and stuff. So yes. it feels like this person's life is perfect. I just want to be like this person. So mm. I just want to clear that. And, you know, everybody goes through a lot. It's yeah. not just, yes. you know, one person. Yeah. Or, so um, your final words. So my final words will be that let's take our mental health seriously. It's important that we do mm -hmm. because... Our very being depends on on how sane we are, you know. And also because if you have, like, good, great mental health, um, you can manage all the other aspects of your life, yeah? Emotionally, you'll find a balance. Spiritually, you'll find a balance. Physically, you'll find a balance. So it kind of holds all the other parts together, and it's, extremely important right. that we always make sure that we are in the right headspace. Right. Thank you so much. And I would also want to add that, you know, you don't have to go through mental health struggles to really read about it. So when you have free time or leisure time, just read about, you know, all those things and be kind to others as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, for reading. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed the conversation. So did I. Very so did educative. I. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.